With thanks to the Ojai Foundation for their space and support, the Joseph Campbell Foundation Mythological Roundtable of Ojai, California presents Kieran Legrese on the Archetypal Cosmos and the Rebirth of the Hero. Kieran is a core faculty member in the Jungian and Archetypal Studies Specialization at Pacifica Graduate Institute, where he teaches courses on archetypes, alchemy, and synchronicity. He's the author of three books and the editor and co-founder of Archi, the Journal of Archetypal Cosmology. Kieran has also taught in the Philosophy, Cosmology, and Consciousness program at the California Institute of Integral Studies and for Grob Transpersonal Training. He holds degrees from the University of Leeds in England and CIIS. Of note to the roundtable, the rebirth of the hero was supported by a grant from Opus Archives, which allowed him to study their collection of Campbell's unpublished work. Well, thank you, Will, for the introduction and the invitation, and uh, thank you all for breaking the cold. I, I know that we, uh, the intention was we were going to be outside, um, and the plan was that it was going to coincide with sunset, but I, I see it, it's already uh, <laughs> pretty dark, so uh, the years moved on. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, just on the, on the Campbell Foundation grant, uh, I, I got that when I was actually still a student, and then the teaching uh, came, came later. Um, because I, I, I did a master's degree and a PhD at, at California Institute of Integral Studies with Richard Tarnas, uh, as Will said. Um, and I, I remember having a conversation with, with Tarnas in, um, I think it was about 2008. Um, and I said to him, you know, wouldn't it be great if there were, there were a course on Campbell um, in the philosophy, cosmology, and culture? Because I knew, I mean, Richard Tarnas was. Um, with Campbell at Esselman, as was Van Groff. And it seemed strange to me that there was no, um, that there had been no course offering on Campbell's work. So, so I had this conversation with Richard Tarnas and I said, you know, great if we could have a course on Campbell. And he said to me, well, I mean, what are we going to include? I mean, Campbell's, um, Campbell's <coughs> canvas is so large, he covers so much. What do you include in a course and what do you leave out? Well, nothing happened after that, and then in 2010, uh, I got the chance to teach at uh, CIS. Um, the strange thing, someone dropped out of a summer course at the last moment, and they needed someone to fill in. Uh, so I said, great, but could I, could I teach a course on campus? And um, so they gave me just, just a one unit course. It was five classes, five three hour classes. Uh, so I had to hastily uh, design a syllabus um, for, for these classes. And, I decided that I was going to focus on Western myth, Western spirituality. Um, so I wanted to <coughs> use Hero's Journey material, but of course, that that's um, what Campbell is best known for. Uh, so I combined that with the Creative Mythology volume um, from the Master of God. Um, so this book, uh, The Rebirth of the Hero, which came out earlier this year, really is an outgrowth of the syllabus that I designed for that course at CIS. Um, and what I tried to do in the course was to, I wanted to help people understand how their own individual hero's journeys were, um, how, they, how they fit into the larger evolution of Western civilization. So, you know, I'm a kind of big picture thinker. Um, I'm interested in the history of Western thought, uh, you know, the, the evolution of, of consciousness, uh, the, the role of the, the death-rebirth process in that evolution. So that's what I wanted to do. I, I felt that many people, when they go through psycho-spiritual crises or, or periods of transformation in their life, they, they, they tend to construe that experience wholly in personal terms. You know, it's my... my my transformation is my existential crisis, and you know the nature of that experience is quite isolating anyway. Um, and that was true of true of my own experience too. You know, I a few years ago, probably about ten years ago now, I really went through a, a, my own a, you know, deep psychological transformation. It lasted a few years, and even though I knew I knew Young, I knew Young very well. Um, I knew I knew Campbell's work, and I you know, very familiar with like mystical literature. I still, it still took me by surprise what I was going through, the, the existential crisis, the, the experience of dying, uh, as, you know, a, 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 quite a, an actual experience of a psychological death, that took me by surprise. And 
So it's only later that I kind of understood what I was going through in terms of uh, the whole pattern of, of Western culture, and particularly with the separation of consciousness from the unconscious and spirit from nature. So that's what I'm going to talk about um, in the first hour, um, at least tonight. And this, that really is the topic of my book, The Rebirth of the Hero. There's two, two parts, it's divided into two parts. The first part looks at the big historical picture. So um, it begins with the, the, the separation of spirit and nature as suggested by uh, the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, um, which Campbell has, has written on. Um, and really it traces a, a trajectory all the way through to the modern era with Friedrich Nietzsche and the, um, his proclamation of the death of God. Um, so I'm just going to speak a little bit about that. And then the second part of the book um, really is a more personal, um, not that it's about my experience, but it's, it's directly related to the, uh, the, the personal phenomenological experience of death rebirth, of what that is like. Now, I tried to write to explain um, in more direct terms, perhaps, than Campbell does in The Hero with a Thousand Faces, what it feels like to go through a descent into the underworld, what, what that is actually like, um, what it feels like to pass through the opposites or to um, refuse the call to adventure. I mean, I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, the basic schema of Campbell's monomyth, the separation uh, the initiation or transformative journey and then the return. Um, so that's really what I wanted to do to help people um, have a sense for what each of these phases of the hero's journey, each of the challenges of that journey are actually like in reality. And, and to, help, to help people navigate that process, I use examples from modern film, Star Wars, uh, Lord of the Rings, The Matrix, Pan's Labyrinth, and I try to um, show how particular scenes in those films illuminate the, the, the psychodynamics of this transformative process. So I'll get onto that in, in a moment. Um, now we're going to begin at sunset, as I said, and uh, sunset, as I'm sure many of you are aware, is, uh, has a symbolic significance too. Uh, in symbolic literature, in esoteric lore, the sun is often uh, the symbol of the light of consciousness. So the sun is the, the light of the conscious ego. And so that the sunset moment is the symbolic moment when the sun, the consciousness, returns to the darkness of the unconscious. The, um, so we have the, the, the sun-moon relationship, but the sun is the, the, the light of ego consciousness, the, the, the dominant light of, of daytime, of course, and the, lo the, the lunar, the moon, is the ruler of nighttime. Uh, the moon in uh, esoteric law is the great mother. It's uh, um, sort of the, the matrix of being out of which the sun emerges each day and you know, journeys across the sky and then descends back into the darkness of, of the, uh, the underworld, as it were, at night. So, in my own life, I've been very struck by the work of Friedrich Nietzsche. Um, and it, Nietzsche's declaration of uh, the death of God, uh, it's about 18, 1882, something like that. I mean, this, this is a pivotal moment uh, in the evolution of, of the ego, the Western ego. What I describe in this book is um, a journey by which the, the ego emerges out of a kind of initial union with nature. I'm sure many of you know the term participational mystique, like the, the idea that consciousness initially, um, millennia ago, was kind of entwined with nature. There was no clear, a separate self-sense, but consciousness existed in a kind of half-light, a twilight existence. Um, and then gradually the, the individual human self became ever more separate from nature. And I think this, this relationship between um, the self, humanity, and nature, I mean, you can see that in the way the civilization has become separate from nature. And you can also see that in, in psychological terms as the separation of the conscious rational ego from the unconscious, from the instincts. So I think there's a parallel here. As civilization has you know, 
risen up and been built upon nature, and in many cases set against nature. So the individual self, the ego self, has emerged ever more separate from its unconscious matrix, 